Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Inside the Force. Dave Cottingham here with Hannah Berg. Good evening, Hannah. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> I am doing good. How are you, I should say, because you've been on the road. <laughs> yeah, I'm and just doing got back fine. today, right? <laughs> yeah, just got back. Been up since uh, 3 a.m. Let's do this. <laughs> I know, right? Let's let's do this and get this done. Thanks for joining no, me. No, living on caffeine. I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. Well, we've been uh, we've been away for two weeks. I was uh, I was at Disney World last week, uh, the week after the hurricane. But you would never guess that the hurricane went through Disney World. Uh, they have an unbelievable staff. Obviously, that cleans up everything and. The weather was incredible, so I, I know there was a lot of disaster. A lot of people are suffering in Florida, but uh, uh, we we had fortunately we were able to have a good vacation down there. So, uh, you know, as far as my trip goes, just to, you know, on the Star Wars side, like you know, as well as I do, Hannah, because you, you're you're actually the only other person I can really talk to about this because uh, no one I really know has has gone, Casey. My, you know, you know, Casey, who we work with, my nephew, uh, he actually went to Disney World also last week, and they took their their oldest child, Jake. Aww. And this that was his first trip to Galaxy's Edge, so you have to talk to him about it when you when you see him again. Oh man! Uh, I actually still haven't really talked to him about it. Um, I was I was there with him. We saw him at Magic Kingdom. But at that point, he had not gone yet to, uh, he went the next day to uh, Galaxy's Edge. So I haven't talked to him since I've been back um, about it. But we saw some pictures. And of course, he's, he's got pictures next to Falcon and, you know, just around Batu. And it's just, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm sure just as well as we experience as fans, first time seeing that place, it's breathtaking. You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable. But, after you've been so many times, it's great. It is great, but it's almost like I almost feel comfortable walking in there now. You know, do you get that feeling? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. I, I, I'm always just trying to keep my eye out to figure out, okay, is there a new thing? Is right. there a new hidden feature that they added? Is there some Easter egg somewhere? Uh, but yeah, it's, I, like I feel a little bad saying it that way, but yes, it's pretty comfortable yes. to walk around it. But this time they did add something new. What did they add? They added the bounty hunting. Have you done this yet? I have not done that yet, but I've heard about it. Yes. I've seen it all over social media and it looks amazing. Yeah. So I'll give my quick review for everybody out there that that's that ever goes here soon. But so Disney world, operates and I think Disneyland's about to do it. Disneyland has always operated on magic bands, which they, it stores your information. Basically you, you don't have to bring anything to the parks. Everything's stored on there. You can store credit cards, you charge it to your room, it opens the doors, opens, um, you know, you know, buys food, whatever. Um, they recently upgraded their magic bands to be more interactive. So now you can get these, I mean, they're calling them interactive magic bands. They're a little bit more expensive, so they're probably, I think, $20 more. But, uh, oh, I wish I should have grabbed it, but it's in my closet now. But anyway, uh, like, for example, when, like, the fireworks show is going off, like, it'll it'll blink and go off. And so oh, it's wow. Got, yeah, so it's got lights on it and stuff like that. There, You know, the 50, 50th anniversary statues that are around, it lights up when it goes by one of those. It's pretty incredible. It's actually pretty neat. Oh, dang. So anyway, they created a bounty hunting uh, event uh, special thing uh, at Galaxy's Edge, which is pretty neat. So real quick, just real quick, because I know people are probably like, I don't even know what you're talking about kind of thing. So they create, they put this. So, um, you know, over there by uh, the, the Droid Depot, there's a, there's those speeders in the garage there where yes. Chewbacca and, and uh, Ray usually hang out. Yes. So over to the right of that on the on the wall, there's a big screen, and you walk up to it with your interactive band, and you scan your band. Now you don't. I don't think you have to have an interactive band. Well, actually, I think you do. 
Actually, I think you do. Because you scan your active band and it basically loads your profile and then loads a bounty on there. So a bounty will pop up with how much credits that you get for it, right? So then your band will start blinking green. And as you walk around ba- walk around Batu, if it, if you're going the wrong way, it'll turn red. And if it's and if you're going the right way, it'll blink green. And it'll keep it'll blink green harder as you're going getting closer. And what you're looking for is you're going to certain doorways that they if you once you go back to Batu, Hannah, you'll actually see there's more doorways around Batu, and they okay. have this little or they have this little yellow bounty symbol on it. So you go up to the door. And if it's the right door, it'll start like turning like a rainbowish color. And so you know what the right, and then you pull up the app, you know, the Disney Play app, you pull up the app, and all of a sudden your your uh, screen will become a scanner and you scan the door and you'll see the infrared of the person you're you're bountying, right? You're you're capturing. What? It scans. Okay, I didn't know that much. Oh, oh yeah, God. you scan them. You like hit the screen, and then it says you captured them. And then you go back to this main door that's by that screen you first scanned. And there's like a little hole in the doorway, and you put your magic band in there, and it scans it. And this little sliver on the door slides open, and this and it's a character back there. And he's like, you know, saying like, oh, you got your first bounty. Good job. Let's see if you can get more because you got to get more to join the Bounty Hunters Guild. And then it slides over and it pays you credits. You'll see on the screen that it's your bank gets. And then you go to the screen, scan another one, and then you do it all over again. <laughs> so my girls, my, obviously my, my daughters were like all into this thing. So that's all they wanted to do all day was go find bounties. My my. Now I will say that mine was screwing up a lot. Like and I heard people talking around that sometimes it wasn't scanning right and it just, you know. So there are bugs in it. It's it's brand new. So um, it's obviously going to have bugs in it. But my but Eliza, my little one, like it worked for her really well. So she got like eight bounties. Sam Sam got about six before it started messing up. I got like three before it met, really messed up, but uh, but yeah, it's pretty neat. I thought it was pretty neat. That's awesome! What an yeah. ingenious way to kind of create this interactive experience and to just keep Batu the same but refresh it a bit. And that's what and that's what they're going to have to do because mm-hmm. again, like people like us that go frequently, you have to keep you have to give us reasons to keep going in there. I mean. Just walking around, because I'm not going to go there and buy lightsaber every time I go. I'm not going to go there and buy a droid, every, even though I got five droids back there. But I'm not going to do it anymore. So, Are you sure? <laughs> pretty sure. Do you have a droid problem, Dave? I only buy, I only bought that many because each one of us wanted one, okay? So, oh, okay, okay. And, and then, then of course, I had to buy one. And then, of course, I had to have a Disneyland one, yes. Um, but I'm done. I'm done now. Like, you know, I'm not buying like, you know, all these holocrons, right? I got the, yeah, that's you know, true. That's two true. Holocrons. Anyway, yeah, anyway, uh, you know, I'm going to go ride the rides obviously, but you know, you need things like this to, to keep you interacted and keep you interested in going. Um, you know, I keep saying, and it's real good now that the characters are back walking around, you know, Chewbacca's walking around, Kylo's walking around, Vi, Vi Um, I think you're going to have to keep adding more characters. Like I know Disneyland has Boba Fett and Mandalorian walk around now. You got to bring that to Orlando. So yeah. So I think, I think, I think they're going to do, it. I just don't think they're doing it as often as they should, but they're, they are, looks like they are trying to think of new ways to keep you there. And that's good. And I, I, I just think that they lost an opportunity of trying to create a neutral space like they did with Avengers Campus. Right. Because it's a very neutral time. Like, not they they can refresh things. They can do various different rides. They can have Iron Man walking around with Spider-Man and there not be a single issue or anything like that. Right, right, right. So I think if they did that, there would be a a better chance of renovation and innovation and keeping things fresh. So I wonder if at some point 
they'll keep it as Batu in order to make sure Rise of the Resistance still makes sense. I know. But I, I wonder if they'll keep Bat they'll turn back to in a more neutral time period. So you don't have to go to a completely different place to see Darth Vader. You can have right. Darth Vader walk around with Kylo Ren. Agreed. I agreed. And, and that's the big, that's the big uh, question mark is rise of the resistance because mm -hmm. that ride is so tied to that time period. How do you change the time period of the, the location without changing that ride so it is that is a tough they put it they did back themselves a little bit because as as i will talk about here in a second you know there's a there's a high republic story coming out that takes place in batu hmm. so it's like now you got a different era that you can have people walking around or interact you know what i mean like make it completely different looking but you still got rise of resistance there so we'll see uh, anyway, that went longer than I wanted to, but anyway, the, that's, that's, that's my Disney world, uh, star Wars galaxy's edge update. Um, doesn't look like I'm going to make it back there till a year from now. So next it'll be a year till I get back there. Probably. Um, I think we're talking about doing a cruise earlier in the year. Ooh. Have you done a Disney cruise yet? I have. Oh, okay. I want to talk to you about that then. Cause uh, yeah, we've been dying to go, so I think we're I think we're gonna pull the trigger on it here. Uh, That'll be fun. Yeah, we'll be okay. Uh, let's see. First off, again, actually, I should have started off with this. Of course, thank you to our, our patrons uh, on patreoncom slash Uh We got some um, new updates right now on there. I'm I I, I know I'm recording this on Thursday night. It's coming out on Friday. But I have updated the Patreon levels now because I'm I've been working on that today and tonight, and I am going to update those. So there are going to be different things about the levels now, uh, and I want to just preface that uh, mainly it has to do with really wanting to create more exclusive content just for patrons. Um, I want to keep the YouTube channel you know, basically with the shows that we have on there with beyond the saga and council sessions, just kind of keep that as a YouTube thing. And I want Patreon to be more than that, not just an extension of that. So I'm wanting it to be a little bit different. So I kind of talked to you about Hannah already a little bit about this, talked to Corey about it a little bit. So, uh, there's going to just be more stuff from us, like more kind of, uh, commentaries and, reaction videos and reviews, um, you know, more in depth reviews, not, not like, um, beyond the saga where we kind of, you know, do general reviews, more spoiler type, really into the story kind of thing, stuff like that. So, uh, reaction to trailers, uh, breakdowns of trailers and things like that. So, um, that, that's kind of where I want to go with that. So that's, you'll see that in the tiers now and, uh, hopefully, that gives a little more people more incentive. I want the, I want people that are obviously supporting us through Patreon to be, uh, to get more exclusive stuff and more direct stuff from us. So, uh, hopefully that I'd love to hear people's feedback from it and, you know, let me know. Uh, of course at the higher tiers, you still get your merch and you'll get more merch from our store, which is technically out there. So if you go to inside the force.com and click on the shop button, That'll take you to what we have out there right now. I'm working on some new, uh, some other shirts and stuff like that that'll be on there. But I actually just ordered some, some of the, um, you know, test test shirts, I guess, or whatever you call it. Like, what do they call it? Uh, uh, samples. Samples. Thank you. Yes, order some samples because <laughs> I I haven't I haven't got the samples yet, but I went ahead and put it out there. But you know, it's like. Uh, I do want to make sure that the, it's good stuff, but I think it is. So let's, let's go with it. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm going to actually, and I'm going to get you some Hannah cause I want to, you know, I'll be sporting the stuff on here on the show so we can, you guys can see what you can get. Of course at the highest tier, which we have a couple of patrons at our highest tier, you guys will get the promo code for the shop as well. So you can get some percentage off. So anyway, going to start doing some, some, some more stuff for you guys on that. Uh, so we appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yes. Okay. So last, uh, this past weekend's New York Comic Con, which kind of snuck up on me, I guess, because I was going on vacation, but New York Comic Con happened and there was a big Star Wars publishing panel there. Mm-hmm. I know that interests you a lot, Hannah. Being oh, did it ever. <laughs> big reader that you are. Uh, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So there were two separate panels. One was just on the High Republic. So phase two kicked off last week as well. October 4th, in, in fact, with the novel, um, what was it called? Path of Deceit came out last week, uh, October 4th. So that kicked off phase two of the High Republic. So other things that were discussed at the panel, which of course uh, involved uh, the, the Lucasum creative director, Michael Siglane, who's involved in the High Republic. And you get authors, uh, Zorita Cordova and Claudia Gray, Justina Ireland, Lydia Kang, George Mann, Daniel Jose Older, Kevin Scott, Charles Soule, of course, uh, Tessa Gratton. You had all of them there talking about what was coming. So here's what's coming real quick here. Uh, we got, so they revealed the first, they revealed the cover art for Cataclysm by Lydia King, which comes April 23rd. You've got a book from Tessa Gratton, which is a middle grade, a middle grade book called Quest for Planet X. So this is the one that takes place on Batu. Oh. At Black in Black Spire's in Black Black Spire Outpost. So the cover arc has it's where you it, the cover art shows where you um, go into uh, Smuggler's Run. Okay. And of course, the Falcon's not sitting there. There's a different ship sitting there in this cover. So obviously, but anyway. So again, that takes place in Batu. I mean, as we're learning. Batu spans across all eras of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You've got um, Path of Vengeance by Kevin Scott, which is this is the book that actually ends Phase Two. So they revealed the cover for that, which really looks pretty uh, looks pretty intense, actually. Um, mm-hmm. You have a. Um, and then you've got art. They showed a bunch of art. Um, you've got High Republic issue number one coming out, which comes out, came out yesterday, Wednesday, October uh, 12th. So the new series, new comic series starts up. We've got to talk about still finishing up the, the first series, which I, I know I told Hannah we got to cover that here soon. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, we got uh, so there's a bunch of artwork they released for the for the um, comics. Let's see what other books they've got here. There's a young oh this is interesting. They've got Star Wars: The High Republic, Yoda and the Younglings. It's a children's book coming out October of this of 2023. Hmm. Uh, which is weird. I guess that's not really a Cliff, uh, there's still phase two, it says. Um, huh. Claudia Gray's new 30 page one shot comic from Dark Horse called Quest of the Jedi, which is actually the name of the entire. No, I think it's Trials of the Jedi, is. I think it is. The Edge of Balance is a book by. Daniel Jose Older. That comes out in May as well. So anyway, so that's that's kind of the layout, a little bit of some other things that uh, are coming out phase two for the High Republic. It'll be very interesting. I mean, I know we're not done with phase one, but it'll yeah. be interesting to see how phase one translates into phase two. I yeah, because... Really <laughs> Because I believe phase two actually takes place even further back in the timeline. I was about to ask if phase two was like if this was a nonlinear yes. type of situation we were dealing with. It seems so, like it. Like, like, it's just going to be interesting to see that transition. 
Yeah, and how and, and why, why? I mean, and why? why? <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't know if I've ever. I don't. I haven't seen because because kind of like you, as I'm still stuck in phase one, so I haven't really completely researched and and heard all these artists talk about phase two or the or these um, writers talk about phase two, and so I don't know if anybody's asked like, okay, so why are we going even further back in time? I, I believe I've read. That phase two takes place 150 years before phase one. So, in that phase one back? takes yes, and phase one takes place 200 years before episode one, right? So, we're talking even so we're talking 350 years before episode one because I th- I believe there's a I believe there's a storyline coming up about like kind of hinting at the the start or the birth of the of the Nihil. So oh, wow. I, I think I don't take me for don't don't take me for granted for that or don't t- don't take me for truth of that because I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but I thought I might have read that. So I you know that's I don't know. I I don't know. That'd be really cool though. It would be, yeah. Yeah. Um so I I I'm like you. I'm like I, I when when phase one's done, I get into two, it's like okay, hopefully there's a so I don't know what the transition is. I believe I know what the end of phase one is, mm-hmm. meaning that I think I know what the big thing that happens because I know I've kind of read through you know this comic, which I think bring comes to the end of it too. Right. So I think I know a little bit what the big thing that happens, but. Um, so I don't know if like I, I really don't know why they would go backwards. Uh, Maybe there's time travel. Maybe we finally got time travel in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. Because uh, in Phase Three, where is that? I don't know where that takes place. Is that or maybe it's like all in Yoda's memory or something? Yeah, that's true too. I'm just, I'm just spitballing. I here. know, but that's yeah. Yoda's around in all of it, so do the Rick. Yep, me that is. <laughs> yeah. Wonder you how I got here. Yeah, yeah, that's good. A long story it is. Uh huh. To the beginning, we must go. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something. There's something that's obviously it's I I believe it has to be connected somehow. I just don't know. Oh yeah, I just don't know how. So the other panel that takes place that took place on the next day was the other uh, publishing announcements that Lucasfilm was putting out there uh, in the in the books and the comics. Mm-hmm. So this is exciting. So one of the main books that they pushed was a new book coming from Dial- Dial- Delilah S. Dawson. Who wrote Phasma? Mm-hmm. Her book called Rise of the Red Blade. Well, it's called Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade. So, uh, this will tell the story of Iscat, a Jedi survivor of Order 66 that turns to the dark side, joining the Inquisitors with the hope of uncovering the truth about her past. So that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a killer cover of her on the uh, on the front of the book too. So, uh, we just covered Phasma recently. Uh, Delilah did a great job with that book. I feel like overall. Oh, absolutely. So looking forward to that. Uh, next was an announcement of a new comic series. Sana Staros is getting her own comic series. <laughs> what do you think about that? Interesting. I don't know if it's needed, but interesting. Yeah, we don't, uh, you know, we, we, we got a little bit of her in the Star Wars series, mm-hmm. right? Because she kind of make a, she, she kind of made a huge splash by kind of, kind of announcing that she was Han Solo's wife. Yep. But but her main story got transitioned over to the Afro comics, which we haven't fully covered yet. So I feel like I don't know enough about her yet to really 
Um, I mean, I know the baseline of her, but I don't know some of her situations. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Afra obviously has become a popular character and, and her series continues. Not sure if, you know, I'm not sure what has made her this popular to get her own series yet, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Uh, and I don't know if it's a, it could be one of those like just, I mean, actually I think it says it's a, it's a mini series. So it's probably only a five or six issue run. Mm. Um, there's a series, comic series coming out, which is interesting. It's called star Wars revelations. Yes. Did you see that? I did see that, that, it, that seems so intriguing. Yeah. And I don't really know. The only thing it says here is um, Marvel's upcoming landmark one shot promises a chart, a course for the future of star Wars comics. Four new covers were revealed, including variants by these artists, all featuring different characters uh, time to make room in your long box. So it's interesting because one's got, a, but one's got four bounty hunters on it. Dengar, Forlom, Zuckus, and Bosk. Mm-hmm. The other one has, Vader's head floating in the Mustafar lava and it's got the I can't remember his name but it's got the kind of the the spider creature that supposedly was supposed to show up in Rise of the Skywalker yes but got cut yes 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 so I don't know what that's about and then another, there's another one with Afra, and then another one with Vader a big close up of Vader's mask and in the eye reflections it's got who I think is Sabe because Sabe has been revealed. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, I, revelations meaning something is revealed, right? <laughs> I just don't know what it is. It's very vague and it, it, it definitely hooks you because these are obviously familiar images. Yes. And so it's interesting to be like, okay, well, what's going to be revealed or what's the big revelation with this? That's right. So those will be coming soon, 2023. And then you've got a continuing series of Vader, uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca and Afra. They're all continuing on. And then the High Republic has got a book coming out called Chronicles of the Jedi which is the upcoming in-universe guide to Star Wars, The High Republic. So they are coming out with a guidebook, which probably would just be phase one, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Star Wars High Republic is actually coming up with their own lightsaber collection book. Interesting. Yeah. I've got the other one actually sitting right here. Um Yeah, this this lightsaber book. Have you seen this? Yeah. Yes. So this is a pretty cool book. Um, it's got descriptions of all the lightsaber. I mean, every almost every pretty much every lightsaber that's been out, and who carried it, and and all that stuff. So it looks like they're doing the same for High Republic. That's pretty cool. And then uh, the most interesting book that I think is coming out February 7th, 2023. I know it's a little ways off, but I'm excited about this. Star Wars timelines. So this ambitious book will tell the full story of the Star Wars saga in chronological order, covering movies, series, comics, books, and more. The spread shows the spread shown centers around the early days of the New Republic, including Luke Skywalker's training of New Jedi, Poe Dameron's misadventures, and more. It seems like the type of book you can pour over for hours, devouring hundreds, if not thousands, of details. So, this is pretty ambitious. It, I mean, it says ambitious. Yeah. It is ambitious. Well, yeah, because not only are you dealing with those, you got to deal with the books and the comics and like everything. Yep. Wow. Now, I do, I do kind of, I wonder 
because when it says books, as you know, there's so many levels of books. Like you got the adult novels, you got the young adult novels, you got the middle grade novels, you got the children's books. Technically, they're all canon. Mm-hmm. Are the I, I can't imagine all of those being included, but maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe they're just like little short, brief, you know, descriptions of each. But the way this the way this looks like it's set up, based on this image I'm looking at, it looks like when you open the book. It looks like there's a line going across the page and off that line, you know, are little paragraphs like this happened at this point, this happened at this point. So it it seems like each page is going to be further down the timeline, further down the timeline, further down the timeline. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in, since this book comes out in February, does that mean there are high Republic stuff in here? Mm. Cause it doesn't say, Skywalker saga. It just it says Star Wars saga. So I'm assuming it has to start with the High Republic, and then right. jumps to you know the books that happened before Episode One, into the movies, and then into the TV series. I mean, it's got. I mean, this is. I am going to be pouring over this thing forever because it. I, I am highly interested in, especially some of the discrepancies that have come up with. You know, when did this happen? When did this happen? This is should be the definitive timeline to say, okay, I'm not sure when this happened. Well, this should tell us now. Hopefully it's spe- a little specific and not too vague. Absolutely. But I don't know. That I mean, definitely will be a an interesting read. Yes. Because, I mean, but like I said, based on this image... I mean, it says, you know, every piece of these extensions coming off this timeline says like 15 ABY, 16 ABY, 17 ABY, 18 ABY, 19 ABY. You know, so it's like, I mean, it's telling you. Wow. That's going to be, that's going to be cool. That I am really, that's above all else. That's, that's the one book I'm like in, very interested in. I wonder, part of me wonders if that started off as a project of them just trying to keep everything in order. And then they're like, hey, you know what would be really fun? Is to turn this into a book. Yeah. Yeah, you got to believe that when they announced, yeah, when they announced like, okay, everything from now on is canon. Somebody start putting it on the chalkboard like, when this happens, when this happens, you know, it's like you have to document it somehow. So I agree. I think this is now all of a sudden they were like, okay, wait a minute. We got enough now that we can make a book. Right. And we'll put a book now. And then like every couple of years, we'll just keep adding to it because yeah. they will have to keep updating it, obviously. So anyway, those are coming out. Okay. Really got to get to these reviews here. Let's see. Uh, all right, just coming up on your release schedule here. Uh, like I said, Path of Deceit came out last week to start phase two of the High Republic. Uh, Convergence is the next one that comes out November 22nd. Then you got the Battle of Jeddah, which is uh, January 3rd. You got Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars, which is that book based on the video game series, uh, March 7th. Cataclysm, April 4th. And then Path of Vengeance, May 2nd. Comics, um, this past week, Star Wars 28, High Republic number one, like we said, just came out. Star Wars Visions number one. Uh, next week, you got Vader 28, Afro 25, the week after that, and then into November, the first week of November, you got Star Wars 29, Bounty Hunters 28, and Mandalorian number five. So those are your stories coming out there in the publishing world. Uh, we are, uh, Hannah and I, um, here very shortly on beyond the saga, we'll be covering, like I said, the, um, the, the end of the, uh, high Republic in the comics, that's volume three. And then we've got a a good one too. Um, we'll be covering crimson rain, which is that, uh, second series that Charles soul has put out War of the bounty hunters. You got Crimson Rain, and then Hidden Empire will be debuting here later this year, and we'll be covering that when that gets out there. So, 
Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. All right, let's talk about another awesome thing right now, which is Andor. Yes. So we uh, didn't talk about episode five, so we'll talk about episode five and six right now. Uh, as we are now halfway through this series, I mean, we have six episodes still of this series, which is crazy. Uh, okay, so episode five, Hannah. Um, this episode was called um, The Axe Forgets. Now, very much so, like we said, the first three episodes, you know, it's, it's it was kind of a three episode arc. You can clearly tell that we're in this three episode arc here on Aldani. Um, this is the middle one. This is kind of the setup to the next episode in a sense. What was your overall thoughts of episode five? Episode five. And it could just be because for me, I, I've never really been a big fan of the heist story plot. Mm -hmm. So personally for me, episode five wasn't as intense as other episodes. I believe that's the episode where I think Cassian really reveals at least for us, because we know what happens in the future with Rogue One, we truly see his character growth and his arc because we see he's really just doing this for money. He's not really doing this because it's right. Mm -hmm. He's he's doing it for money. Meanwhile, everybody else is doing this because it's revenge or they think it's right or, you know, I, I think this is the episode where we truly see everybody's motivation for where they are. Yeah. Even on the Imperial side. Mm -hmm. And I think it just helps create an idea that, you know, everyone comes from a different angle. Everyone comes from a different point of view about the situation. And of course, we're leading up to this big heist that they want to pull off and they're right. training. And there are a couple of things that are just. I don't know. So, so for me, it, it's probably my least favorite episode so far in the series. Episode five. But I think it's the most revealing regarding motivation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your What are your thoughts on episode five? Yeah, I uh, I, I felt like I don't know. I, I felt on the, on the edge this whole episode. Like I I, I felt the build up. You know, the thing about the thing about these which I think they're doing a great job with the, the, these three episode arcs are basically movies. Oh, I, they're, they're fantastic. They're really, really, you know are. What I mean, I mean, they're, if you look at them, you know, they're 45, 50 minutes a piece. So you've got, uh, what you've got a two hour movie with each three episodes. So you kind of, and, and they're structured that way. You've got episode one in a sense, the or episode four, which was kind of, act one of the movie where you're introducing your characters and you're introducing the plot, the, the goal, you know, and then the second one is like the setup and uh -huh. how they're going to do it. And the problems that are going to that you anticipate going to come up with it. And then the third one obviously is the execution of the, the plan and you know, whatever. So, I mean this, as I'm watching this, I'm like, okay, something, you just something's gonna go wrong or something crazy is gonna happen and the intensity i felt like that because you know my my the scene that really the scene that really kind of drew me in i feel like to this episode was the one where vel and uh tamarin brought andor in to talk about how he was going to get the ship out yes right and he's basically like, you don't know? Like, what What do you mean you don't know? They're like, no, we want you to, you know, it's like, we want you to tell us how, <laughs> how you would do it kind of thing. It's like, what would you do if I wasn't here? You know, like, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's like, no. So he's almost like, and then he's taking control. Like, no, I'm going to fly. If, if, if it's going to be anybody, it's going to be me. I really love that scene because I think, you know, he – is starting to really establish that and and realize in that that this isn't happening unless I'm doing this. Like there's there's mm -hmm. no way that these guys would make it. 
And then I think ultimately that's what happens in later in the end when he reveals kind of his true intentions because at, at that point, you know, everybody's kind of questioning and they're they're afraid and, you know, I, and I love the scene where we'll get into it the next episode where he, when he's talking to uh, the young kid mm. about fear and, you know, about, you know, it, it's really good. So, uh, so yeah, so I was, but not only, you know, you had those episodes, those, uh, those pieces in this episode, but then you're cutting to the Mothma stuff, which <laughs> I mean, if there's one character in Star Wars that I had a complete, uh, that I felt like I had a complete understanding of, and now as I'm starting to learn about them, is completely nothing I expected. She's the top of the list. Uh, wh- what did you take out of these episodes from her? Because obviously we got introduced to our daughter. And her situation with her husband, kind of thing. What did you think? I just, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I I don't know what to think. They, it, uh, their relationship is definitely strained. So I don't know. Like I know you're we talking before recording whether or not uh, it was an arranged marriage or if they're right. just staying together just because they have a kid. Yeah. Um. So like I, I I have no idea. And then, you know, I don't know if he knows exactly what's going on or if he's choosing to be ignorant or if he really doesn't have a clue. I don't know if the daughter knows. I think the daughter knows something's up, but she just frankly doesn't really care about anything. But I, like with with Mon Mothma, it's like, wait, what? Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, what? Like that. I feel like that's the journey we're going on with her. So it'll be very interesting to see because I I, will talk about this later, but it'll be very interesting to see where it ended with her in episode six, how the rest of the season is going to play out with her. That's going to be interesting to watch. Yes. So what was your take on? um, Well, like the, like the first scene when she's sitting there and her daughter comes in for one, I don't think they, I mean, I've watched the thing like four times. It's like, I don't even think, they they really explain where she's talking about taking her. They don't. They don't, I right? Me too. I'm like, well, where? Like, yeah, like she's like, we had this planned. You know, you're coming with me, and she's like, I don't want to go. It's just for you. And then it's like, is she taking her to like a political thing, or is she taking her to just like the museum, or she's you know, I, or some charity yeah. thing? I wish, I kind of wish they would have told us because even though it's not maybe relevant, but to me it kind of is, but just because. That would um, that would kind of lend itself to the explanation of why she's attacking her so much. Yes, you know what I mean. And it would also establish their relationship. It would uh, it would establish, you know, is mom trying to teach her how to be a politician, or yes. is it this is educational, so this is something you have to do, or you know, yes, something to throw us a bone. I mean, maybe we'll find out later, but right, because at the end when she's leaving, she's like you know, I appreciate your support sarcastically. Right. So it's like, right. so support of what though? So that's what I was kind of, is it really vague? Like, is it just support of you being a Senator? It's, I don't think it's the rebellion, you know, or, you know, I just, I, I really think, especially when we, you fast forward to the scene with her and, and the husband in mm-hmm. the, in the speeder on the way home, it's like, I, I don't think, he knows her involvement. In fact, I don't know if she's fully involved in a sense yet, right? Besides monetarily. Right. So she's not like what we know of her later, which is actually strategically picking where the bases are. How are we going to fight back? Like, I don't think she's doing that yet. Do you think she's doing that yet? I don't know, because she did mention in a previous episode, if anything were to break, she would be the first to fall. And to me, that means she has a lot more of a stake in this than anybody else. So I think I don't think she's like she's fully stepped into the position, but I wouldn't be surprised if she at the very least planted the seed in a couple of these bases across the galaxy. Okay. Okay. I can see that. The only reason I... 
The only reason I say, I, I, the reason I think that she's not basically basically making rebellious rebellious decisions yet is because I think that the rebellion, what seems to me the rebellion right now is being funded by her and a couple other people. But, what, but can't you argue that deciding to fund the rebellion is in and of itself a rebellious decision? Absolutely. But what, what I mean is like strategic. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. You know, like battlefield type decisions like what Luthen is doing. Right. Like, I don't think she's involved in that yet. Like okay. we know of her in Rebels, in Rogue One, in Return of the Jedi. Um, yeah. I, I think I think we're seeing how she becomes that in this series. And so right now, that's what that's what I'm, I think makes these this in episode six. We can go ahead and go ahead and start getting in episode six is they are try, they as in Luthen in this group, they are trying to figure out how the, how to fund this rebellion. And they need to they need this money to do that because of all the issues that are that she's running into transferring money and whoever it is else is transferring money. You know, as as we come to realize obviously that there's other rebel cells out there like the ones that we know of with the ghost crew. They're not stealing money to try to fund it. They're kind of completely on their own in a sense. Mm-hmm. It seems like Luthen is really trying to get enough money to where he can fund several different things going on. Right. So I think my thing about Mothma, I think is that once they have this money now, she doesn't have to worry about funding it. That's when I think she starts getting into the actual leadership side of it and making strategic decisions on when to strike, where do we hide, where do we meet, you know, things like that and starts and starts bringing in other senators because hey, we're now funded. That that's kind of where my head's going with that. I don't know what you think. No, I I mean I definitely think that's a possibility. It'll just it'll be interesting to see because with Luthen, I'm I think you're dead on. I think the reason why he's like, we need all this money is because he's, I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to bring together everyone. Mm. And the the one way to do it is to unite them under one person. And so maybe, and maybe he doesn't want to be that one person. And maybe he tries to convince Mon to take it from him. Like he does a kind of a passing of a baton type of thing. And I have a gut feeling Luthen's going to die. I was I just wonder, about to say, I don't think he survives. Yeah. I, I think he's going to die. And in his death, Mon picks up the baton and continues what he started. Yeah. I like that. I, I, I really hope that's what it is. Cause then, cause it's not Do you like think he survives this season. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it's a, I don't know, but I think, I think he survives this season. I don't definitely don't think he survives that much longer it, no. like into the first arc of the next season, you know, stuff like that. Like I, I don't think he survives to the end for sure. But I think that's going to be the final step and the final push Mon Mothma needs to step into that leadership role. Yeah. Because and, otherwise and everything it, will be chaotic. Right. And it's gotta be, it is gotta be a little bit early too, meaning that, <laughs> It can't be that much closer to Rogue One. It's got to be on the kind of the far end of Rogue One because we know in Rebels, she is that person that kind of forms, officially forms the alliance, the Rebel Alliance. Um, so, and I, and I want to say that takes place like two or three years before Rogue One. So, you know, she's got some time still to get there, but um, I think you're right. I think this is... I think I think Luthen is is establishing the connectivity between these cells. And who knows it might be cuz I know in an earlier review we were talking about, you know, are, are they actually trying to steal credits or are they trying to steal payroll information? Um 
And in this episode, it makes it pretty clear it's the credits, but I wonder if that is payroll information. So Mon Mothma can get that. She gets what she needs. Luthen has what he needs with the money. Mm -hmm. They kind of go their separate ways and then they're brought back together. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if it was just the money or if we do see some spyless going on with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but episode six in general, to taking a step, unless you have any other thoughts before we no, take a ahead. step back, like no. taking a step back, looking at the episode as a whole, um, it's a stunning episode. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's intense. There's a lot going on, but it's a story simply told, if that makes sense. I, I mean, I think it's one of the best episodes we've seen so far. I 100% agree. Yeah, 100% agree. I think, you know, the one the one thing that keeps standing out every time I watch these episodes is the writing is so good. It's brilliant. Yeah. It just, you know, and, and it's just as simple as using the the different the different, you know, words to describe things, the the, the language that these writers have given these characters. Um, you know, Andor doesn't seem I mean, he still seems the same, which is crazy. He still seems like the same guy from Rogue One. Uh, but all these characters that he's meeting, especially the Imperials, like the Imperial dialogue, it, it's fantastic. It really, really is. Yeah, I almost it, wonder if they got some, if they have like one team that writes the Imperial. Yeah. And a separate team that writes the Rebellion. Just to help keep that dialogue separate. Agreed. That that would be incredible if they did do that. Um, but yeah, and it's uh, so it's so that 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 in itself it just draws you in and hooks you and, and separates itself. I think from from other series that have come out. Um, now, I will say overall, I agree with you. I think the anticipation, the intensity. Uh, the, the the drama that was happening in this it was really really good um I, I will say though i think not not that i was i don't want to say i was um how do i say it uh, the the i was a little let down not let down i don't want to say let down because that sounds like a negative thing uh I expected a little bit more from the escape, actual escape. Um, like I thought it was cool to see, you know, the the Tie Fighters coming at them, and I thought, um, I don't know, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's like I kind of felt like there was the the whole eye part, you know, that when the when the the meteor shower actually yeah. came and stuff. Like we saw some glimpses of it, but I don't know, I just. I felt like uh, I felt like we didn't get enough of that. Like that went by really quick, and it kind of ended really quick. The eye, or just the escape in general. That that part of the escape, because um, because because obviously it, it started happening. They were loaded up because all the intensity and all the fighting happened before that, right? When they were trying to load up, and then when it, when they launched out. I don't know. I, I felt it was a good opportunity to almost, for me in a way, and this is this is completely subjective, but for me as a kind of a semi filmmaker, like that would have been a good time for me to to kind of almost slow it down a little bit and really kind of give us as a viewer a sense of what all these people were talking about. You know, the the majesty of this thing because mm. we only saw it at different points. You know, we never really got as a viewer just sat back and like like everybody else just kind of entranced in this thing because to me that would have been a little bit more like okay here's here's a second or two to see the beauty of this thing and get drawn in and then here's the intensity of what's happening in this thing i don't know you know it's i felt like this thing happened we we were following him in the in the ship and then the tie fighters were coming after him you don't really and he's yelling the kids in there telling him you know go up go down and it's like you never really get a chance to kind of see it uh, fully. I don't know. 
that's again, it's just my opinion and my what I would have done, but it didn't really knock the episode down in any way for me. It's that exhale that you need. That exhale of, oh, we got out of it, but we're not out of the woods yet. I almost wonder, I think it would have been really cool if when they got out of it, we actually got a, free, a from outer space type of perspective on it, if that makes yes, sense. Yes. Yeah, totally. Like looking down on the planet and seeing it that way. Yes. Uh, one thought comes into mind that kind of what I compare it. Do you remember, um, I know you've probably seen it, right? Do you remember the third Matrix movie? Matrix. Um, oh, Revol- it's been years. It's called Matrix Re- Revolutions. Yeah, it's been years, and I think I know what scene you're talking so about. So there's a scene where where Neo and uh, Trinity are flying a ship to the Machine City, and they're flying and they're getting chased, and they all of a sudden he gears up through the clouds, and for a second he breaks the clouds, and they see the sun for the first time. And that are, was you don't and, and and the scene and the ship kind of freezes in 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 the sky. Yeah. And there's this look on Trinity's face when she sees this, like, Oh my gosh. And as an audience member, I'm looking at, and you look at this and you, you feel the way she feels because we've been in underground with them this whole movie also. And we haven't seen the light. So all of a sudden you get this sense of like, Oh wow. It's gorgeous. And it's, there's like, it's like five seconds of just floating and seeing it. But then all of a sudden, it dips right back down into the clouds and you're back into the chaos. That's, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, I, I think there would have, it would have been cool to like, even Andor just for a second to look at it like, Oh wow, this is incredible. Kind of, th- I don't know. That's, that's just me. And, and they could have done that when they got out and then he looks and then all yes. of a sudden like the kid makes like a oh moment and that boom, that brings him back into the, all right, I need the numbers. <laughs> You need what numbers? Like oh, yeah, 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 exactly. You need to tell yes. me where to go. Where to go. Yes. No, I agree. Yeah, that's, that's, I felt like it kind of went by and we never really got to, you know, the buildup of the eye these last two episodes. And it's yeah. like, I wish we could have seen it the way that they described it. Anyway. Or a little bit more. I mean, we get a little bit of it, but I, I think you're right. I think there needed to be a bit more, at least through Andor's eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely through Andrew's eyes, I think. Yes. Um, surprised Hannah about how many deaths we got in this episode. Not really. Me neither. I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm not based on their training. Not that I didn't doubt. I, I didn't, I, I won't spoil it. There is one thing I didn't see coming. Oh, you they, can spoil it. This is, we're talking, right, we're, talking okay, spoil. Okay. we're talking, we're talking, we're just full review here. Um, the the twist when the guy I forget his name but Skeen. he was like yep I don't have a brother yes yeah it's like oh snap but I think that's yeah. such a great it's a great parallel between him and Andor mm-hmm. that is the perfect parallel of what Andor could be and who he is choosing to be instead yes. now granted he still's like hey I'm leaving but he's not taking everything with him you know it's, yes. it's still a step in the right direction uh, but I did not see that one coming yeah. I didn't see it either, but I kicked myself because I should have. Oh, why do you, why do you think you should have? Well, because it's basically they told us this was going to happen when the last episode okay. he walks up to him and he's got his shirt off and he's telling him what all those tattoos mean. Right. And that right there tells you, okay, he is, and like you just said, he's Andor. So that means... He's not there for the same, the real reason that everybody else thinks he is. Oh, I thought that was just him like saying, look, this is my past. No, I think that, I think that was, again, you know, kind of in storytelling, that's the foreshadowing. Like this character is not who you think he is. Oh. And I kick myself because I'm thinking like, there's got to be a twist to this thing. There's got to be, because this is, you know, again, it's a spy movie. It's a heist movie. There's always a twist at the end. There is. That's the twist. And I, as soon as they were sitting, as soon as the scene came up though, and they were talking, I did think, oh, he's going to, he's, he's going to do something. He's going to try to, I, I, I didn't think he was going to say like, I didn't think he was going to lie about his backstory or say he was lying about his backstory. I did think he was going to say, 
attempt to 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 either kill and or or think to himself because I thought I thought in that scene I'm thinking the whole time he's thinking okay well these guys are dead now I get more of a cut now I'm just gonna go ahead and take them out and get the get all of it mm. so I didn't I didn't see the proposal of you know let's split it kind of thing but as that was going on I'm like oh man he's gonna turn on them and but that was his plan the whole time and I was like oh that was his plan oh I should have known that <laughs> anyway <laughs> But I agree with you. It was, it was a it was an interesting twist, and uh, I did like how. Um, yeah, I was. I, was, I, I thought I, I, for a second I thought the kid would survive because I thought that would be a good dynamic going forward. Having I really wish the kid would have survived because I thought the kid was going to convince Andor, and I guess the kid will still through his yeah. manifesto, but. Right. Still, I was like, man, at first when she said, thank you for trying, I'm like, oh, so the kid's just paralyzed. And then they pulled the sheet over him. I'm like, oh. Right. Man. I know. Um, Yeah, overall, I I mean, I liked it. I I think it was a great episode, um, a great finish to this this three-episode arc. So just, I guess little speculation where where do you think we go from here like we're um, we're we're going to see the first formings of the rebellion I do think you that's... think do you think there's going to be a time jump now to the next episode or do you think uh, we actually pick up right where we left off no i think there's going to be a time jump i think so too a slight one, not a giant one. No, I think maybe a maybe a month or a couple weeks. A couple months, something like that. Yeah. Something where all of a sudden we see, okay, Luthen has these different pockets. Like he's visiting these places, helping planting seeds for the rebellion, helping fund the rebellion, getting everybody under one name or at least under one leader so they can all work together. Because right. he... Like at the end of that episode, you can tell he was so relieved that a statement was made. Yeah. Agreed. And with that, it's like, okay, now we got a face. Well, we, yep. we have something. Let's get everyone behind this something instead yes. of all these other separate somethings aiming towards the same goal. Let's get some organization in here. And one but, of those groups, of course, we know is going to be Saul Guerrero. Of course. And that that's going to be interesting. That's going to be very, very interesting to see. Because he's um he has some interesting methods and yes that I don't know. So like it's gonna be interesting to see how these different pockets have to adjust their mindsets. Yeah. Towards this more unified goal. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 it kind of makes me surprised to possibly know that. Because I th- I believe in the trailer, when we do see Saul talking, I think mm-hmm. he is talking to Luthen. I think he is. And I don't remember. I'd have to watch the trailer again. Yeah, I think he is. Which kind of makes me think now. It's like, wait a minute. So is it possible that Luthen starts funding Saul and the partisans? It could be he is trying to convince him to join or something. I don't know. And maybe Luthen's like, at first, I need to get these people to trust me and to be on my side. And then I start changing yeah. their methods. I don't know. I don't know. I think at this, I think at this point, they just, they need all the help they can get. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens to Vel and Cinta if, if we uh-huh. see them again. Basically, the only other survivors. Yeah. Um, I do think Cinta is in the trailer still. Uh, I believe she's actually, I believe in the trailer, she looks like she got gets captured. Uh, because well, I think I she's mean, getting interrogated sense. by by Deidre, the Imperial. Okay. I, I was going to go back and watch the trailer and kind of see what extra scenes are still left out of there that we haven't seen. Um, but yeah, it, six more episodes still to go. So we'll be back each week talking about them. Uh, mm-hmm. anything else on these two Hannah um, no I, I think we covered it all it's certainly not Ambor <laughs> definitely not definitely not 
Uh, a couple comments I wanted to read uh, from our last episode. Um, now, this is based on episode four. But Thrawn Attic says, uh, loving these weekly and or episode reviews. This is the best episode so far, mostly due to Mon Mothma, of course. She was fantastic. It was interesting to see what her life is like on Coruscant at this time with her funding the rebellion and recruiting new people. Definitely need to see more of this. Had no idea she was married. Do you or Hannah remember if they mentioned a husband in Aftermath book series? Because I can't remember. So intrigued to see if that marriage may end up when people find out about... Uh, wait a minute. Uh, because I can't remember. So intrigued to see if that marriage may end up when people find out about her in the rebellion, how it ends up probably. Uh, no, I don't believe it was ever mentioned that she was married before this series. I'm quickly Googling that, but I don't think either. Yeah. He goes on to say, to be honest, would rather have a whole series just of Mothma and Coruscant than Andor, which could be kind of a, like a house of cards set in Star Wars. I'm all for oh, that. Oh, heck yes. I'm beep, all for that. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Saying that, I am still enjoying Andor's story and slowly seeing him from being the new guy who people don't want to trust where he is leading Rebels in Rogue One is really interesting to see. Seeing ISB such a great highlight as well in a weird way was really rooting for the ISB woman and I had to remind myself she is part of the Empire. Thanks again, David and Hannah. May the Force be with you. May the Force be, and also with you and your spirit. <laughs> yes. That was, uh, the, I look, I... I, I think Mothma, I think the character Mothma is going to be uh, extremely popular after this series. So I think, I think, I think something on her own could definitely be in the works. Uh, another a comment from Jojo. They say this episode was definitely my favorite one in the series. My Mothma is such an interesting character. And here we see her normal behavior as a person rather than the authoritative image that we see in return of the Jedi rogue one and rebels. It's very similar to her in Revenge of the Sith and the deleted scenes of her discussing the petition of 2000 with Padme, Bale, and others. Great review. The one on the Mandalore is awesome too. You and one of the you are one of the few people I listen online that I trust to talk positively and truly on Star Wars rather than hateful and negative like other people. Keep it up. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. That's great to hear. And it also breaks my heart. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? There's a lot of, a lot of negativity out there. Not yeah. here, though. Not here. Not here. No. I mean, we may, you know, we may not like something, but we're always going to be. There's a difference between that and being negative. Correct. Correct. Also, I can't find anything about the Aftermath books mentioning Mon having no, that. I, I think I would have freaked out if I would have heard that because I would have been like, what? Yeah. But no. Like I did with when I saw her. Yeah. Yes, so it's like, wait. I was like, what? At first yeah. I was like, oh, is that her advisor? That's her husband. <laughs> I know. And he looks so just douchebag kind of guy. <laughs> so it's like, uh, whatever. <laughs> no offense to that actor. But no, totally- no, offense. They, no, they, they dressed him perfectly. Like, you know? That's what I mean. You don't yeah. like the guy right away. <laughs> it's like, he's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, another comment here from uh, Kimura. They say, the way I figure it, the galaxy in Star Wars is so big that they would have to lean on physical currency. This goes on our conversation yes. about like credit versus trying to maintain a universal banking system to keep track of all transactions across the galaxy. They would have issues with comms all the time. It would. They have issues with comms all the time. It would probably be more common in the core worlds to have something more like more credit like mostly uh more well off folks so that's interesting I, I do agree i do i do i didn't think of it that way kind of it's so vast that you probably need physical currency so yeah. i do agree i think there are probably it's probably more physical currency out there probably mon mothma being married through me who would have guessed but it looks like it was either a purely political marriage not sure what advantage he would give her uh there or she thought she loved him and jumped too quickly to find out their value systems are worlds apart very true i love that uh latter opinion Mm -hmm. um because i know you're working on the princess and the scoundrel yes but you've gotten through the beginning yes 
that brings a whole different light into Mon and Leia's exchange in the beginning of that book. Very true. So, I know because oh. she's because she's married. Well, I don't know if she's married at that point. Like they might have divorced, or he might have died, or whatever. But yes. still, it, it. Oh, whoa! <laughs> that brings a whole new perspective on her. Like many speech she gave her. I know, right? It is. You're right, and I think when we when we talk about that, I think that's going to be part of the whole impact of the saga. You know that we talk about with that book because now that we know a lot more about Mothma, it does change that scene. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah, everybody, you'll you'll get that in our Princess and the Scoundrel review here soon. Um. Yeah, but but no, I th- I think everybody. I think everybody is kind of thrown back about Mothma being married. I'm it's, pretty sure that wasn't on anyone's uh, Star Wars bingo card for 2022. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Jojo also mentions on our Beyond the Saga episode of Shadow of the Sith. He mentions great review as always. What about a Disney Plus series about the novel and continuing Luke's story to when he exiles? Sold. Could be be animated or live action. Shut up and take my money. (laughs) Yes. Animated or live action? I would say at that point, do animated. I I think so too. Like that. And then that way you can still have Mark Hamill do his voice. Yep. And you don't have to worry about aging actors or anything like that. It it gives you a lot more freedom. Yeah. I've, I've kind of said this in the past a lot is that. I think anything involving the original trilogy characters, I think I'd be all for any kind of animated series from them during around that time. Like even I know we got a whole comic series now filling in the gaps between four and five and six, but hell I'd take an animated series during that time. Oh yeah. You know? So anyway, all right. Thanks all for all the comments. Uh, as always, thanks for all the uh, all our patrons and all of the support for the show. We really, really do appreciate it. Um, I think um, I think we're back here regularly now. I think we're, I, Hannah might be going out of town a few times here and there, but <laughs> <laughs> I think you're out of town next week. Actually, next right? Week, yeah, we we probably will be doing it from a hotel room. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, but we, again, uh, yeah, we'll be here, uh, talking about Andor. And of course you can go over to the Mandalore podcast, uh, on Mondays that comes out on Mondays, a little deeper dive into each episode with me and, uh, Martin Donison over there, cyber Ren. uh, other episodes of council sessions beyond the saga, all that stuff's coming out on YouTube. Again, like I mentioned to our patrons, we're going to be doing some extra, just separate bonus, uh, video content for patron. So look out, look out for that starting, uh, probably next week. So, um, thank you. Thank you for everything. Uh, Hannah, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Truly appreciate it. Yeah. You need to get some sleep. Yes. (laughs) I'm going to work on some stuff, but, uh, thank you everybody. We will see you next week. Go enjoy and or take care. May the force be with you.